thank you to the tool. This is the workshop. Uh, so, you know, since that this medium uh, was some limit of limited interaction, sort of I'll keep you know, pestering you with questions, some curiosities. Maybe not completely partially good. So the first thing, you know, we are in an obesity workshop, and all of you, right? Uh, if you're not already done it, or if you don't already know, you need to know your BMI. So you know, uh, you have your mobiles with you, calculated. Uh, because by the end of this lecture, I'm going to ask you, right? So that's what we are going to start with. So you know, let me start with this. And um, add a slide. Right, so see. How was it? While the slides go, uh, let me start with this. 1923 uh, was a year enjoyed along all uh, five years down the line nine yet another recovery which changed the face of perhaps we are alive today our type 1 patients are alive today because of the we are all alive today perhaps because of the discovery in nine can somebody tell me what was the night? Penicillin, right? So, penicillin, as you know, was a chance event, serendipity, right? That, you know, uh, Fleming was perhaps not intending to start it, he ended up discovering. Of course, it took about 20 years for us to find that and use it as a product. That penicillin for the humankind. And I think, you know, uh, I'm sure we will all agree, all agree, probably alive today because of under antibody. I think, you know, the next generation of a challenge as human beings in terms of disease is not just infectious disease, continue to pay, but it is obesity, right? And it's associated with obesity. Now we are a part of a diabetes campaign discussed earlier. It's Part and parcel of obesity. I think yet another serendipitous discovery really perhaps could potentially change time and perhaps save us from a plethora of obesity. All going to fail. That's perhaps more about that as so. These are the financial. So, you know, when you talk about obesity, all say, you know, we all agree, all of us need to. Right? But you talk to your patients about losing. There's always an element of triviality. Always take obesity with a tight spiral. Right? You know, when you have a patient uh, coming to you with obesity, they do. Or if you have a diabetic patient with obese, uh, when you talk to them about uh, obesity per se, and get the, this little lighter. Vis a vis, if you're talking to someone about, you know, pancreatic cancer, which, right? You all take it a little bit. With a pinch of sugar, I'll say, it'll be in the same right? But what we don't realize is that, you know, the problem which is uh, omnipotent and going to affect more human beings, affect more of our lives than perhaps pancreatic cancer would, right? And hence, you know, uh, we need to take obesity a bit more seriously, right? We all talk about diet, and diet continues to remain the movement of obesity along with other lifestyle. But be honest with you. Think about your last patient who was able to maintain good weight control with diet alone. 
Sir, you have any patient who had a good career? Have did I alone very few, right? They are able to work. It's it's a challenge, right? The biggest problem with diet is this uh Nike oh, right? Uh what happens is that Great enthusiasm on 1st of January of every year. You all take up, uh, you know, uh, unusual uh, decisions to uh, hit the gym and control our diet. By February, uh, most of us are, you know, have lost weight. Then March and April and the conference hits us. By December, we are back to where. Right. So that that's what typically happens to not only. Oh, our patients, but to us as well, right? And that is what uh, is diets fail over a period. There is there are a lot of challenges. There are human elements to it, but there are also physiological elements. Why diets alone fail? So obesity management is a multicentric uh, problem, and it needs to uh, multicentric. So you no, know, there is. Uh, we all know about the importance of hormones and peptides uh, with relation to. I'll tell you a very interesting. I published this paper on hypothalamus. Uh, had a patient, uh, we, of course, you know, uh, of endocrinology, see a lot of pain of pharyngeal. A lot of the times, you know, you have supra a very large, go and damage the hypothalamus, and surgically, he has a damage. We had this patient of ours uh, who had significant damage to the, went to the median area of hypothalamus. Just to tell you, Natural guy of hypothalamus control. They they encourage you to, as the you know ventral median uh, hypothalamus that discourage you to. Patient had a damage to the ventral median aspect of surgically. This patient had what is known as voracious appetite, right? Uh, along with other disturbance. The, all this patient would do, or would you know uh, sleep all the time, then wake up, right? Ask for food, demand for food, right? Eat his food. Uh, up till he felt that you know I, I probably had enough because of then go back to sleep. Right? That's all he did for his life. And uh, the patient's wife, you know, ये तो कुम्करण की तरह. तो कुम्करण. Wrote this paper on hypothalamic obesity, but we also wrote something in uh, IJEM about why perhaps कुम्करण had hypothalamus. Had this typical. The interesting thing is that there are centers in the brain. Which control uh, the appetite and which control, and you know while diet is in our control and while lifestyle measures are uh, probably not in our control. So if you see, uh, you know, number of studies have used lifestyle measures help lose weight and of course maintain that lost weight. Uh, that continues to be a challenge over time. Several studies. So is there a better way to manage obesity? Uh, like I said, you know, enthusiasm often drives us to uh, a dip in our weight. But then, you know, it's not only only lack of enthusiasm or lack of motivation, but there are physiological reasons why you often gain back a lot of weight. Right? Remember, human body always tries to maintain state of home, always tries to go back to where we started. But what is interesting, and like I said, you know, uh, serendipity that a drug which was meant for diabetes put us. That perhaps not just everything is not dark. Perhaps you know if you do lose weight, some medications are are going to be there which can help you maintain the weight. Right. So why do people with obesity need? That's the million dollar question. Literally, it's million dollar because right now, if you see in terms of the most enthusiasm in terms of uh, drug development, really it stands in uh, you know the part of where you know, have anti-obesity drugs. So pharmacotherapy is basically, uh, you know, have come and gone. They, however, have not stood the test of time. Because the problem with these pharmacotherapies were a couple of them. One, a lot of them were not tolerable. A lot of them had unacceptable side effects. A lot of them did not have cardiovascular safe. Uh, a lot of them did not address the patient's concern. More importantly, all of them were multi-time. They looked at obesity from one pathophysiological problem, tried to solve that problem. Of looking, uh, you know, as a as a multiple problem. It's right? just like, like you have omnius octet in diabetes. Perhaps you have multiple pathophysiological processes that impact. 
So this is one process which is really important for us and in why obesity type of hunger that you so again let me tell you an interesting uh, anecdote so there are a lot of studies uh, done in animal models there is there is you know uh, often there are mice models that generated to generate equation of obesity right like like the mice right then there are situations where you do the who the the natural uh, hypothalamic what happens is the mice right so you put the food in front of the mice unlimited food mice is just you know a few meters away that areas of the brain are removed right the reward areas of the brain hypothalamus parts are removed the mice would not get up from it is the food unlimited and so much so that the mice would die of undernutrition get not that is the impact of our brain and on the contrary the other way other aspect of what we are all doing to right we are now you know, as a reward right and to be a reward now we seek constant reward from this food right if you are hungry and a lot of patients tell us you know stress eating right uh, i i had a very hard day at work today i came home and had a very nice tea right now, how many times have we heard a patient right Say I'm going. I was going through a tough divorce, right? And that that is the time I gained, right? Stress eating. That's that's what is known as the hedonic hunger. That is that is the head hunger, right? That is where you actually are not really hungry, but you eat to derive the pleasure you get from, right? On the other hand, there is of course real hunger, what is known as a stomach hunger, or the homeostatic hunger, where you actually eat because you need. Is your your GI tract tells you that you know. When children say that paid fed or rent, that's that's basically home, right? Where you actually eat because you need. And then of course you have the executive function where, put the situations you have a choice. That you know whether the brain tells me that I need to eat, but I say I'll control myself, not now, right? Or you know your stomach tells you that your gut tells you that, you, right? That's the executive where we take. So again, all of these centers are under control of various hormones. Right, so you have the homeostatic hunger by GL, right, and you have, of course, the hedonic hunger controlled by dopamine and by opioid and cannabinoid receptors. That's why a lot of earlier, you know, if you remember, Rimona band, a lot of these drugs looked at the cannabinoid pathway, really control the hedonic hunger problem, but that lead to more uh, uh, rather than. And of course, you have the behavioral interventions. Uh, you have many drugs as well, which uh, you know are indirectly working on the executive function, where right, not right. Okay. So now let's of course come to the pharmacological options. Like I said, medications have come and met, right? But not many medica medications. Obesity has. So here are some uh, which are perhaps you can say the last men standing, in obesity or the last frontiers for obesity man. You have liraglutide in the dose of three milligram. Uh, you have naltrexone, bupropion, which is uh, in combination and individually uh, by some of us uh, for obesity. All is that. Uh, Perhaps because of its benign and perhaps I would say ineffective nature, has stood the test of time, right? But perhaps, perhaps you know, nobody really likes all this. To be honest with you, you have fentanyl and topiramate. In fact, topiramate individually is also a lot of for obesity management. And of course, you have C by two point four milligram up and coming drug for obesity. Now, if you see the mechanism of action of all of these drugs, a lot of these drugs work on multiple mechanisms, but the in the GLP one works on multiple parts. I'll come to this in a minute. Whereas the polystat, the naltrexone, bupropion, get action. So let me come to this fact of how glutide and how GLP really. So I told you about head hunger and I right. Know that the GLP acts on the GI tract. What it does basically slows down your gastric empty. Have fullness up. Fullness in a sense your further food. But what is very interesting. Uh, recent studies done with MRI have shown that this drug LP also acts on the central mechanism, also reduces or hedonic hunger reduces have from the brain the head hunger. But, uh, that's why perhaps this drug is, is has dual effect. Hence, that uh, the functional MRI pictures which have shown that 
hemagglutide has action on the centrifuge also. So if you see further down, it overall reduces hemagglutide in the dose. 2.4 milligram reduces appetite overall and has multiple mechanisms by which it right now what is interesting that so like i said in a lot of terms it basically designed was designed as a anti-diabetic drug on to become an obesity there are now several series of uh, trials which have been done look at how semaglutide is right so there are a series of uh, trials which Step programs. I'm not going to talk of each of. Them. Idea is that now, semaglutide has been already tested in multiple scenarios. It has been tested in non-diabetic patients, it has been diabetic patients with certain medications, cardiovascular disease. Like I said, across the several board, uh, it has stood. Time there is a step teen trials also, which is that uh, using semaglutide in teenagers or obese. So overall, uh, Dr. Manoj also already told you about how much weight loss can you. Expect. Typically, I just right. Uh, typically, you can expect a weight loss in the tube 10 to 15 percent with a glutide point formula, right? Uh, which is quite the target which you try and achieve. But of course, there are patients who from less weight, uh, you know, as close as much, uh, perhaps even better. Right, so I'll leave you, uh, leave you with this thought in mind. Right, the study uh, where they looked at, which is the step five trial, where they looked at two years outcome uh, with semaglutide in terms. Right, now picture this with what you saw in the, right? every slide you saw earlier, this Nike tick sign where you had an initial weight led by a future weight gain, but this is the drug which clearly seen typically lose a period of, but and these patients were followed for 104 weeks and continued. And hence this drug perhaps. Right? So uh, I'll leave you with this. And to just summarize, and you know, this is where I come back to your uh, own BMI, right? So analyze yourself, right? Now you have a treatment of obesity. You know the consequences of obesity, as you saw from the very first slide by Dr. Manu, right? You know. Your BMI, you know the consequences. I'm sure economics is not a problem. A lot of you, you know, I would say, and you believe in science, right? I would say, you know, here is a drug which helps you lose weight. There's cardiovascular benefits. Uh, you know, it's an anti-diabetic also. So if you're diabetic or if you're not diabetic, perhaps you will not develop diabetes. Perhaps it is a good time to start considering drug for ourselves. This 